Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a very exciting double-edged game played between Vishwanathan Anand and Gary Kasparov. The game was played in 1995 at Paris Grand Prix semi-final. Interestingly, in the semi-final Anand missed the first round by mistake. Kasparov offered to play an additional game, but Anand declined and the second game started under normal conditions. In this game Anand had white pieces and in this must-win situation he opened up with e4. Kasparov responded with his usual Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, classical variation is on the board against which white is choosing the Richter Rouser attack bishop g5, e6, queen d2, bishop e7, white castled queen side and in return black castled king side. This is a sharp line which leads to a very entertaining battle. f4, h6, attacking white bishop, but instead of thinking about moving it back or I don't know capturing on f6, white played a very aggressive h4 move. In typical positions moves like h4 can be seen very often and uh, when you are accepting the peace sacrifice white is doubling up his heavy artillery in the h file thus targeting black king. Earlier I have already shared with you a nice game played between Mikhail Tal and Robert Byrne where the same idea was used. In case you missed that game, the link will be in the comment section, but meanwhile let's proceed with the game. At this point, instead of going for an immediate h takes g5, uh, black first went for the exchange of knights on d4 and only then accepted the peace sacrifice. Looks a bit risky, but Kasparov went for it and now let's see what's going to happen next. Uh, h takes g5, knight g4, bishop e2 and e5 attacking white queen and at the same time protecting the knight. Now if for example f takes e5 then black can choose between bishop takes g5 or d takes e5. Of course this line favors black that's why uh, Anand moved back his queen. He wants to put his queen on h2 and create a mating attack. E takes f4, bishop takes g4. White is first removing the knight which was covering the h2 square and only then is playing queen h2 with a direct mating threat. f5, black is opening up a loop for his king and there comes queen h7 check. By the way, as you may have already guessed, g6 is not good because of this bishop h4. And in view of this g6, actually at this point f6 is not good because in this case you are blocking the diagonal, not allowing this bishop to step on h4. Yeah, that's why we see f5 in this case to g6. Black can answer with bishop h4. Uh, and that's the reason that instead of g6 we see queen h7 check. King f7, rook h6. Uh, not the strongest continuation and instead Stockfish is suggesting e takes f5, a move which leads to an almost forced line. Now if for example bishop takes g5 then knight e4 and if f3 check then king b1. Let's take a quick look how all this is going to end up. And then if king g8 then knight takes g5 after which black is playing bishop takes f5 neutralizing the mating threat. And if queen h5, then first h1 queen. And then after rook takes h1, black is giving up his queen. Yes, and in this case, uh, white is of course managing to gain advantage, but realizing it is not that easy. And black has great chances for fighting for the draw. Queen takes d6, bishop d7, threatening checkmate. The bishop is untouchable. If queen d3, then rook 8 f4. Uh, and yeah, still everything is not that clear. Uh, the engine gives white better chances, but uh, as I've already mentioned, black can fight for a draw. But instead of choosing this line, which is of course more promising, we see rook h6 by Anand. Bishop takes g5 and rook takes d6. This is a serious mistake, after which White's position collapses quickly. Actually, at this point, uh, with a queen g6 check, white could force a draw. But this meant elimination from contest. That's why, instead of choosing this line, Anand chose the risky rook takes d6. And now, let's see what's the problem with it. f3 discovered check, king b1. And at this point, Kasparov sacrificed his queen. Queen takes d6. A very powerful move, 
with which Black is eliminating an attacking piece, is luring away the rook from the first rank and then is getting a very dangerous post pawn on the second rank, threatening g1 queen, queen h2, bishop f3, queen g3, rook h8. An inaccuracy by Kasparov which is allowing white to equalize, but let's not forget that this was a rapid game and uh, unlike classical games, typical inaccuracies can be seen very often. Uh, and the problem with this move is that by playing a rook d7 check, white could easily draw the game, which again favored black uh, because Anand missed the first game. Knight d1, g1 queen, rook takes g7, king h8, queen takes g1, and yes, we have an equality on the board. Bishop takes e4. This is going to end up in a draw. Instead to rook h8, white answered with queen takes g5, which is allowing black to go for a queen promotion. g1 queen. Rook d7 check, but already it's too late. And instead of playing king g8, which could allow white to draw by going for rook takes g7, we see king f8. There is no queen takes g7 because of this queen takes g7. Anand played queen takes f5 and king g8. Queen takes f3, rook f8, queen b3 check, king h7, and finally at this point Anand capitulated. Yes, there is too much pressure on d1 if queen d3 then rook f1 can follow and then queen g6. There are no more checks and black is winning. After the exchange of queens, king c1, yeah, black has a very active position, is an exchange up, black can easily win this. Uh, that's why at this point, where is that king h7, yes, after king h7, Anand resigned. A very, very sharp game, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In a must-win situation, Anand threw all his anger at black king, but... Kasparov's defense was impregnable. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning move for white. It's white to move and, as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.